Uh, okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, welcome to the new session in the, in the puzzle track. Um, uh, my name is CJ, and I'm, uh, I'm the moderator of the, the puzzle track, but I'm also the, uh, like the speaker for this session. And uh, today I'm going to kind of talk a bit about um, uh, KOP, AOP, and MOP. Uh, so KLP means uh, Kafka on Pulsar, AOP means uh, MQP on Pulsar, MOP means MQTT on Pulsar. So those are kind of the three uh, protocol handlers that we developed uh, in the past uh, couple of months. Um, bring in uh, some of the native uh, messaging protocol uh, support on Pulsar and be able to uh, uh, first date, uh, date the interoperability interoperability between different messaging protocols. So this talk is mostly focusing on uh, introducing the protocol hand handler and how we uh, provide native support on Apache Pulsar to support different uh, messaging protocols. Uh, so uh, my name is CJ. I'm currently the kind of co-founder and CEO of Stream Native. And I'm also the PMC member of Pulsar and Bookkeeper. And before I was uh, kind of an ex-co-founder of Streamlio and also ex-Twitter ex, uh, and ex-Yahoo. Uh, I'm based in San Francisco and I have been working on uh, messaging and streaming uh, data technology for many years. So if you want to, uh, you can um, you can join a Pulsar or Bookkeeper Slack channel and uh, you can easily find me and connect with me there. So uh, before get started, I just want to give a uh, kind of a simple introdu introduction about Pulsar. So Pulsar uh, originally was kind of built as, uh, as a cloud messaging service uh, within Yahoo. So the uh, the concept of Pulsar is very simple. It's a pop up system. So you have a topic and you have producer producing the message to a topic. You have consumer uh, consume message from a topic. Uh, but different uh, from other kind of messaging system is uh, Pulsar uh, was built uh, on providing a unified messaging model. So you just need to start one copy of data in the topic, but allow uh, uh, your consumers to have uh, different uh, uh, subscriptions and each uh, subscription can have different ways on consuming data. And those consume uh, different ways are kind of called subscription type. And in Pulsar, we offer like five uh, subscription types, and they would they are good for different type of use cases. For for example, like share are good for worker queue workloads, and uh, failover is good for streaming workloads. In key share is kind of a combination of both uh, failover and share, be able to provide key based ordering and uh, also the ability to scaling up the consumption beyond the number of the uh, the number of the partitions. So uh, you can actually use uh, Pulsar for both workloads. So uh, like um, for supporting uh, worker queue that was originally supported by RabbitMQ, but you can also have uh, using Pulsar for supporting uh, streaming use cases that was originally supported by Kafka. And Pulsar has a lot of features, like, uh, um, like it's a rebalance-free architecture and be able to support high throughput in low, low latency messaging and streaming and uh, build in multi-tenancy geo-replication and be able to integrate with a uh, computing uh, data processing engine like Flink for uh, unified batch and streaming. But Pulsar is good, uh, but I already have application that might already written using Kafka API, MQT, MQP API, MQTT API, and what I'm going to do. So the the Pulsar community kind of uh, spend a lot of effort trying to uh, help people that who already uh, using uh, other messaging system like Kafka, uh, uh, RabbitMQ, uh, like M MQTT brokers to get them easily on board uh, onto Pulsar. So 
uh, the community spent a lot of efforts. Like for example, we develop a, a kind of a Java wrapper over a Kafka API. So you can just drop in if you are uh, using Kafka Java API on writing your application, you can just easily drop in uh, the Java wrapper to strap uh, the dependency. You can just easily point in your existing Kafka application to a, a Postal cluster. Uh, you can uh, use the Postal IO connector to data migrations. Uh, you can uh, migrate data from your existing messaging uh, system to Kafka, uh, sorry, to uh, Postal. Those are kind of the existing efforts that we spend there, but those are kind of the I ideal solution uh, because uh, it's really hard to keep up uh, with all the functionality providing in the other messaging protocols. So uh, the idea coming out is, can we implement Kafka, MQP, or uh, MQTT protocols on POSA? And uh, the kind of it, uh, the, it come to the POSA community, it also come to us is uh, we need uh, POSA to natively support the, those messaging protocols for uh, like adoption reasons for like the in, inbound requests that asking us for supporting those messaging protocols or easily migrating the existing uh, APIs uh, applications to POSA. So then we're going down into a route, like thinking about how to implement another protocol on, on POSA. Uh, there are kind of two approach. Like one approach is uh, we just like add another layer, a uh, proxy, a gateway that is able to speak in the um, like Kafka, MQP or MQTT protocol and translate that protocol into POSA protocol. And the second approach is, can we just implement uh, those protocols, the Kafka protocol directly on top uh, uh, within POSA broker. And uh, a lot of companies kind of going down in the first uh, approach that is uh, implementing a Kafka proxy for POSA or uh, implementing an MQP proxy for POSA. Uh, OVH Cloud uh, took the kind of first approach in, in the beginning. So they implement a Kafka proxy for POSA using Rust. But the challenging they are facing is uh, uh, in Ka specific to Kafka, uh, proxy can ad address a lot of uh, the problems like produce, consume, but there's one type of uh, problems that uh, using the proxy approach, you cannot uh, address it uh, in a very um, like, uh, great way. And that is the group coordinate in offset problem. So, the difference between Kafka and POSA is uh, in Kafka, the group coordinator is a kind of elect actor within a, a cluster, and it's responsible for assigning partitions to consumer and managing offset for individual consumer group. But in POSA, the partition assignment is actually managed by broker on a per partition basis. And offset management is totally different from uh, the Kafka because the offset management in POSA is actually uh, done by storing the uh, acknowledgement in cursors that uh, by the owner broker of a given partition. And the challenging that uh, OVH Cloud is facing when implementing Kafka protocol in the, in the proxy is uh, sim simulate the protocol in the proxy level is really hard because it, it, it's missing the low level information. So uh, we can step back and think about uh, if it's difficult to implement in, uh, in the proxy level, can we just go directly implement a uh, Kafka protocol on the uh, on POSA broker? So uh, over here, so we um, stream native, we kind of explore that direction. And uh, in one of our meetup last year, we post a, a tweet about like uh, a demo that we uh, like we do uh, about our new efforts on Kafka and POSA is actually implement the Kafka protocol directly on the POSA broker. And OVH Cloud start these tweets and they reach out to us and which leads into our collaboration on co-developing the, uh, the project Kafka and POSA. And what does Kafka on POSA is actually do? So before kind of deep dive into the implementation, I would kind of step back in to really think about what, it, uh, what is POSA. 
a lot of people uh, have the impression is PASA is just a PubSub messaging system. Uh, but in our, uh, uh, what in, sorry, from uh, the, the core maintainer, other the, the maintainer perspective, we think PASA is not just a, a PubSub messaging system. It's actually an infinity event stream storage. And the, how we can interpret that this statement is in PASA, the whole storage model is kind of building around topic and an append only uh, distributed log. So within PASA, uh, the, the first uh, storage model is topic and producer is producing the messages to the topic and consumer is uh, consuming messages from the topic. A topic. A topic is divided into multiple partitions. And this model is very similar as uh, Kafka um, uh, sim or any other similar messaging system. Uh, but the difference is actually coming from uh, a give for a given partition. Uh, in PASA, a partition is divided into multiple segments. So when a producer produces a message, it, it, it's actually appending the message to the to a partition. And when it appends the message to a partition, it, it appends to the last active segment. So when you keep appending the message to a partition, then uh, PASA will keep roll, uh, roll over to a new segment. And those segments is actually event, event, uh, even if distributed across the storage node, then uh, we can uh, uh, evenly spread and distribute the data across the storage node. And you are able to uh, increasing the whole storage capacity by adding more storage nodes. So if you take a look at the whole, the fundamental abstraction in the PASA storage model is actually an event stream, an append-only event stream. And that stream is comprised of multiple segments. And uh, this would create a great model for us to uh, build a kind of infinity event stream storage that I can explain later. So uh, in PASA, we basically have two, uh, concept, one is partition, and partition is divided into uh, smaller segments. And that is that fit very well into PASA's multi-layer architecture is uh, uh, PASA have two, has two layers, like one layer is broker, and which is the serving layer. The second layer is the storage layer, uh, uh, which uh, PASA is using another project called Bookkeeper for storing uh, the, the, the segments. So, Broker is actually a steady serving there. Uh, broker serves uh, partitions. And broker writes segments into the storage there. And the, the storage there is comprised by bookies. And bookies are the storage node storing the segments. And uh, because the way how a parser organizes the partition in segments, we can map individual segments as the blob in the blob storage. So it's easy for PASA to introduce the concept of uh, tier storage. And the reason for uh, introducing tier storage is we are able to leverage uh, a cloud storage like S3, BlobStore, and GCS for storing data for much longer duration. And uh, the offloader deploy within PASA, it would automatically offloading some of the segments became old. So, you can leverage uh, the, the cloud native storage by ex, uh, to extend the, the, the whole storage capacity of PASA. And this would actually create uh, infinity stream storage uh, for, uh, for PASA. And that's the reason we call PASA is actually an infinity event stream storage rather than a PubSub system. And the PubSub protocol is actually a very thin layer built on top the the whole uh, uh, stream storage layer, which I can uh, cover a, a, a bit later. So as you can see here, the, the foundation of PASA is actually it create an infinity stream storage and which provides a unified view for the streaming data. And you are able to use the PubSub API for uh, streaming the, uh, uh, for streaming the data. Uh, producer for the uh, the the data into the end of the stream, and consumer can stick to a given position and receive the data. But because the the data the the data of a given stream is also 
kind of uh, divide it into uh, many segments. Uh, you can also create a segment reader to read those uh, segments in parallel. So uh, when you integrate this model with uh, a data processing engine like Bing, you are able to leverage the the funny uh, granularity of those segments to parallelize the the data processing. And it's a good it's a great model to fit very well into uh, batch processing. So uh, that is the kind of the uh, explanation of why we think Pulsar is actually a stream storage rather than a pop up system. So then going back to the uh, when Pulsar originally built, uh, because the carefully design of making Pulsar uh, build on top a stream storage model, the Pulsar mastering protocol is a very thin layer just built on top of the stream storage. So this is a kind of diagram to show uh, the whole Pulsar architecture. As you can see here, it has uh, kind of three components, uh, JuKeeper for metadata storage and service discovery, Bookie for storage. And on the broker, it actually built a full, uh, I would say this event stream storage concept in, in Pulsar. So each topic is backed up by a manager ledger the manager ledger you can think about it's a append only distributed log on it, a stream. And the stream, uh, the manager ledger is using a storage library to talk into the, uh, the, the bookies. And uh, broker, in the broker there, it provides a lot of like uh, uh, distributed, uh, um, distributed system functionality like the load balancer, geo replication, uh, policy management. And the Pulsar protocol itself is just uh, a very thin layer uh, in the uh, on uh, kind of receiving the request from client and uh, convert the request into an append operation in the managed ledger. And uh, the uh, all kind of uh, when we receive the consume request, it will just convert into a read request on the managed ledger. And in this way, all the functionality is actually building in the kind of manager ledger layer. And uh, this is the, the layer we call kind of a stream storage. But the protocol itself is just a, a very uh, thin layer that is receiving the request and interpret uh, the request and convert the uh, converter requests into operation in a, in a storage there. So the idea came out of this kind of model is we think, okay, we already have the whole foundation there, be able to kind of uh, receive the request and convert a request into operation in a storage there. Why not just like uh, implement another uh, protocol uh, using, uh, so using the whole like the functionality that already provided by Pulsar. And that kind of leads to the creation of protocol handlers. And the protocol handler uh, can be implemented uh, using, uh, to support different uh, type of prot protocols like Kafka protocol, MQP, MQTT. And this uh, protocol handler was actually introduced in, in 2.5 uh, Pulsar release as a P1441. Uh, so if you go to uh, Pulse or GitHub uh, repo, you can click the wiki page. You're able to see the, the uh, there's a P called P41 Plugbo uh, protocol handler. And the protocol handler itself is the uh, provide all the interface for you to interact with the, the storage layer. And uh, everyone can develop a protocol handler for Pulsar. And uh, the, the protocol handler can be packaged into a non-package, just very similar as how Pulsar pro, uh, package other plugins, like a Pulsar function, connector, uploader. So th those plugins are also kind of using the same mechanism to uh, package the plugin. The protocol handler, is also very easy to install. So what uh, once you have a protocol handler, what you just need to do is uh, you need to drop in the protocol handler in the directory, 
this is a directory called a protocol handler directory. By default, it's in the uh, protocols directory, but you can change it uh, to any location you want. And uh, you need to change a setting called uh, mastering, mastering protocols, means uh, which protocol you want to load uh, when uh, starting a broker. So once you have uh, these two configuration config in your broker, you just restart your broker, then uh, the, the broker would actually starting uh, to uh, like, starting a listening thread of a uh, process, uh, actually listening thread for listening uh, any uh, the request coming in using that protocol. And uh, you can just simply pointing your existing application to uh, the endpoint or the, the, the part that your broker is listening on. And then it, uh, the postal broker will start uh, taking uh, those requests and converting the requests into uh, uh, the post operations. So using this framework, uh, you can uh, you can just have one single post of storage, but be able to uh, plug in different type of the mastering protocols. And using this model, we have been uh, we have built a kind of three main uh, three popular messaging protocols like one is uh, Kafka on Pulsar that is you are able to uh, that uh, Pulsar broker speak Kafka protocol and this work is uh, is a collaborate work between uh, stream native and OVH cloud it's open source and announced in uh, on March uh, 2020 and the second one is uh, 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 AMQP on Pulsar it will provide a uh, MQP uh, 0 0.9 uh, protocol support, and it's a collaboration work uh, between Stream Native in China Mobile. It's announced in uh, June 2020. And uh, the last one is recently announced by Stream Native is we add MQTT protocol support on POSA. So with uh, all these three uh, protocol handlers are open source under uh, Apache license V2, and you can just download the protocol handler and install into your Pulsar installation. And you are able to use Pulsar to support your existing um, application that written in uh, using Kafka, MQP, or MQTT. So just kind of uh, deep dive a bit on into individual protocol handler. As you can see here, the, uh, the uh, Kafka protocol is actually uh, in implement as a Kafka protocol handler. And this protocol handler is a plugin built on top uh, uh, Pulsar storage. And it's able to uh, kind of taking the request coming from uh, uh, your Kafka client, either your Kafka producer or Kafka consumer. And the, the ex implementation is actually very uh, straightforward because both Kafka and Pulsar are built on the same data structure, um, kind of a distribute log of structure. And it has a lot of similarity in terms of protocol. Uh, both protocols support topic lookup. So you need to do a topic lookup in order to find which broker own or uh, serve that, uh, a given partition. Uh, it have a, has a very similar concept on topic, partitions, uh, messages, and offset. And uh, the operation are very similar, produce messages, consume messages, and you need to maintain uh, the consumption uh, state uh, in in uh, in Kafka it's offset in Pulsar it's a cursor. So the implementation uh, since it, there's a lot of similarity between these two protocols, the implementation is done very straightforward. Uh, the first thing is uh, because Pulsar is a, a hierarchy topic management, it has tenant namespace. So we have to in order to map Kafka's model into Pulsar, then we have to that user specify a uh, setting of Kafka namespace where you want to store all your uh, Kafka topic in in the Pulsar namespace. And on the messaging uh, uh, in the offset side is uh, in Pulsar the offset is message ID. It's a combination of ledger ID and entry ID, and we need to convert the ledger ID and entry ID into a wrong number, which is an offset in Kafka. 
and on the mastery level, uh, it, it, it has a lot of very uh, similar properties like key, value, timestamp, uh, headers, properties. So we just need to do this one one mapping. And uh, in terms of uh, topic lookup in Kafka, we just need to, uh, we leverage the uh, partial topic uh, discovery mechanism. And uh, on individual broker, uh, it would just call uh, partial uh, 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 topic discovery uh, request and then to find the owner broker. And when uh, it locate the owner broker, it would just uh, convert the Kafka produce and consume request to uh, partial topic produce and uh, uh, and partial uh, the, uh, the non durable cursor read entries to read the entries and take the entries and convert that back into uh, Kafka request and. Uh, for keeping the compatibility between uh, Kafka's uh, offset management and uh, partial cursor management, we store all the um, group information and as well as offset Im information in a spatial topic called uh, public slash Kafka slash uh, offset. So all the offset information is there and there's a, a background daemon automatically Thinking the offset information back to uh, partial cursor, so you are able to use the partial admin tool to view uh, the current consumption state, like uh, how many messages in the backlog, uh, like uh, how many uh, producers in, are connected to this pro, uh, partition, and how many producers are connected into this partition. So you can use the partial. Um, Admin tools like uh, Grafana dashboard uh, and uh, partial manager for managing all your uh, Kafka uh, consumers in uh, uh, and producers through KOP. So in Kafka, uh, KOP is actually support a lot of um, like uh, uh, functionalities for the uh, for going production like uh, multi tenancy security authentication authorization and it's able to leverage postal geolification tier storage schema for uh, kind of uh, uh, all the benefits that you can get from uh, a postal cluster and uh, just want to give another highlight on the KOP side is uh, we uh, since postal has uh, multi-tenancy built in and uh, we want that uh, uh, the post uh, Kafka uh, existing Kafka application is able to leverage it, the multi tenancy uh, in Pulsar. We kind of inject the tenant information through uh, the SASO plan uh, authentication. So you can you can specify the tenant in namespace in Kafka's uh, 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 SASO plan uh, authentication as a username, and use the Pulsar uh, token authentication as a password in the SASO plan authentication in your Kafka. So you are able to pass in the tenant and authentication information and pass that information to Pulsar. So in this way, you are able to leverage the multi-tenancy feature that provides by Pulsar. So this is just an example is uh, uh, you can specify the tenant and you can specify the Pulsar token as a password and uh, you use this information to specify the uh, uh, your uh, Kafka producer in uh, Kafka consumer, and this would translate into uh, uh, partial authentication and um, and tenant information. And uh, Kafka on Pulsar has been open source uh, for a couple of months, and we have been seeing um, like. Uh, Increasing adoption, uh, including companies like Tencent uh, that is using uh, uh, Kafka on Pulsar for migrating some of their uh, workloads to Pulsar. And uh, there's still some lacking uh, features like uh, uh, the support of Kafka transaction, and we are waiting for Pulsar transaction to complete in uh, 2 7 release. And right now, uh, the KOP support uh, all the version uh, above like 2.0. So you can use 2.0 up to 2.6. Uh, 
And uh, but there's still uh, a lot of users kind of using uh, Kafka 1.0. So uh, we are working on support old uh, Kafka version as well. And if you're interested in uh, KOP, you can download and try it out today. And it should be very easy to get started. And you can start slowly uh, migrate some of your Kafka uh, application to Pulsar through KOP and uh, enjoying uh, all the features providing by Pulsar. And so after a successful uh, kind of uh, story of uh, aiding Kafka support, then we work with uh, uh, China Mobile on code developer, uh, uh, another protocol support called AMQP on Pulsar. And right now it support AMQP 09, uh, 091 uh, protocol. And if it similarly, uh, it kind of add another protocol handler in, in Pulsar. And, uh, but because AMQP protocol uh, is not, doesn't uh, support uh, topic discovery. So we, in order to make uh, sure the AMQP client is able to locate the right broker. So we aid another layer called um, uh, AMQP proxy is able to route the AMQP request to the right broker owner. So this AMQP proxy in MQ protocol can form as one uh, protocol handler uh, package. So you can just install one uh, uh, protocol handler, you are able to get all the functionality. So just to give you an idea is uh, Kaf the Kafka protocol is very similar as uh, Pulsar protocol, but the MQP protocol is a bit different. MQP protocol has a lot of concepts. Uh, it has uh, exchange, uh, router, queue, and also vhost assignment. So uh, in order for us to kind of fully compatible with MQ protocol, we are kind of mapping the uh, exchange into uh, one Pulsar topic, but leveraging the uh, geo replication or the re re replicator mechanism that we have in, uh, in Pulsar, replicating the data into uh, another index topic. The index topic is only uh, storing the index, the message ID that would uh, reference back into the original topic. And the, the way how it works is, uh, we can use the index topic to uh, for mapping into the MQP queue. And that is a kind of a limitation coming from the MQP uh, protocol. But with this mechanism is we are able to store one copy of the messages, but leveraging uh, the index topic to quickly look up the message store in the original uh, the exchange topic. In this way, we are able to provide a very high uh, performance and avoid uh, and avoid duplicating the message uh, when uh, MQP uh, protocol need to route message to uh, individual queues. So uh, this model fit very well uh, into uh, uh, MQP and, uh, and also we are able to leverage all the, um, uh, the, the, the functionality providing in the postal storage. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, MQP is, doesn't have the, uh, the notion of topic recap. So uh, in order for the MQP client to locate the right uh, uh, broker to, uh, to send a request, then we need to implement a very thin uh, proxy service as part of the pro protocol handler. And the proxy service is able to locate uh, like uh, the right vhost for a given M MQP queue and which is a namespace bundle, then uh, the namespace bundle can, uh, we will use the parser topic discovery to uh, find the, the broker that own that we host. And uh, the, the proxy service we're managing all the mapping between uh, we host to a, a parser broker and it's able to route the message request. And it's also available uh, in open source. You can download it today and try it out. And the last one is uh, we recently added MQ MQTT. And since MQTT is a much simple uh, protocol, and right now we support uh, QoS level zero and level one. QoS level two is uh, in progress. 
uh, we are kind of waiting a uh, parser transaction to complete. We will leverage a parser transaction to uh, complete uh, the support of our QoS level two. And uh, very similar as MQP, uh, MQTT doesn't have the notion of to topic ownership. So we have to aid a uh, proxy service for route uh, the, the MQTT request to the right broker owner, uh, the owner broker. And it's also available uh, in uh, uh, open source and you can download it right now. And the most important thing here, as you can see, the, the, uh, the messaging protocol is not trying to duplicate those functionalities in, in POSA, but it's just actually adding a very thin uh, protocol layer to translate some of the messages into the operations that were happening in the POSA storage. So you are able to uh, kind of produce and consume messages, use, use the uh, messaging protocols that you like, but uh, you just need to store one copy of the data. With this uh, vision in mind, you are able to use POSA to build a unified messaging platform for your different uh, messaging applications. And so in this kind of vision is uh, we treated uh, POSA as a unified event stream storage. And POSA protocol is actually provide a uh, unified messaging mo model for uh, queuing and streaming but also POSA extend its protocol uh, uh, by leveraging the protocol handle the framework, you are, oh, we are able to support a different uh, type of messaging protocols. And uh, this is kind of the presentation I, I'm going to share uh, today, but the, still there's a lot of work that we need to do in the protocol handler to really uh, make uh, uh, POSA be able to seamlessly support different uh, protocols uh, like uh, schema integration uh, and uh, cloud events integration. Cloud events is a kind of a standard uh, in the cloud native uh, uh, ecosystem. So we want to make sure all these messages can be uh, translated uh, between uh, uh, different protocols. Uh, but we will keep uh, evolving the protocol handlers and we, uh, we are going to have um, upcoming POSA Summit in November uh, 28th and 29th. If you have any uh, story about POSA, feel free to submit uh, a presentation. Or you can uh, also sign up in the uh, link. So it, it's using the same hopping instance uh, that provided by Apache Software Foundation. So if you just uh, uh, click this link, it, you can register uh, for POSA Summit Asia as well. So, uh, oops. So, uh, and th that's all for my uh, presentation. You can follow me uh, on Twitter. Uh, uh, if you are in POSA Slack channel, you can jo join uh, KLP, LP, MOP channel for uh, any discussions related to those uh, protocol handlers. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, uh, if there's no questions, and um, that will be all for uh, my talks today. And you can find me on our Slack channel if you have more questions. And thank you everyone and uh, have a good day.